The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter number 6 and verse number 1, it says, And the sons of the prophets uh, said unto Elijah, Behold, now the place where that we are dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and, and take hence every man a beam, and let us uh, make us a place there that we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and uh, hey, go with thy servant. And he said, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried, and he said, Alas, master, uh, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, uh, and he cut down a stick. And he casted it uh, into thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore he said, said he, take it up to thee. And he put out his hand, and he took it. Father, in Jesus' name, we sure do love you tonight. Thank you for the good day you've given us, Lord. Thank you for the service this morning. God, tonight, hide us behind the cross under the blood. God, may you use your servant tonight to break the bread of life that your word, uh, Lord, will not, will not return forward. God, we love you tonight. We need you and desire you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen, amen. You may be seated. Very quickly and speedily tonight, I, I want to get to verse number five. But to get to verse number five, we need to understand what's in the other verses. May I say, when we look at this, uh, we glaze at the life of Elijah. We, we find an outstanding prophet, but one that was a little different. Right. I like what the pastor says. We do not judge them when they come in the door. Right. Can I tell you, we all have differences. So Elijah, hey, we know that, uh, that, that he was a little different. Uh, he was more laid back uh, behind the scenes, but he also was a teacher of theology. Can I say we find, uh, listen, that the school had, it had grown, the quarters had got small, and so we see that the students got involved. Can I say tonight, we need people to get involved. It's our duty to get involved. Listen to me, for what he's already done for us, he got involved. We need to get involved for him. We need to repay him just a little bit, although there's not a price that can be placed on our salvation. So we, we need people to get involved, get interested, uh, get close to, to God. But can I say, as God was allowing me to pencil this down, the thought come to my heart that, there's not much being accomplished. It's not much being accomplished. We got a lot of motivation of people, but very little power of God. It's the time we're living in, church. It's the very day and the hour we're living in. We got motivation of people and very little power of God. Very little moving of God. May I say we're working in Jesus' name, we're singing in Jesus' name, we're preaching in Jesus' name, but we see more emotion out of people and no moving of God. God oh, can I say verse number one very quickly to get where I am? We see a problem. The, the quarters are too small. The students had outgrown uh, the very school and the quarters that they were at. Wouldn't it be good that this place, God would fill this place up to the extent uh, uh, that we had to put chairs out uh, and we had to extend the quarters? Yeah, right. Amen. Can I tell you, there's a possibility that we too at Emmanuel Baptist Church could have the same problem, which is a good problem, yeah. Amen. if we would just compel them to come into the house of God. Yeah. Well, can I tell you, I'm all for going, uh, taking off and going so winning. Somebody say Amen. amen. Oh, listen to me. I love to soul win. I try to make it, I try to do that in everything I do is to be a soul winner. Yeah, amen. Oh, but can I say we see the problem? Uh, oh, but listen, it was a good problem to have. Uh, verse number two, we see the people. We see that the, hey, the young man that laboring and working and doing a job, following the man of God and seeing the moving power of God. 
I wrote down in my notes this. I said, young men uh, who do not, who do not, who do not have a position in leadership, but have a position in labor. I said I was going to encourage you, but I want to challenge you. We need to challenge ourselves. We can do more, church. We can do more. We get in this comfort zone. When God starts blessing and things start moving and everything going to look good and every, we have no problems, uh, can I tell you, we also get idle. In the very moment, in the moment, in the instance that we ought to be up and on fire and jumping up and down and shouting and praising God, we just get steady. We just get steady. Oh, can I say, they was not looking for position they were looking to help in the labor. That made me ask myself, what am I doing? What is it I can get involved in? Have I got to have a title? Are you with me? Say amen. I have one. Can I give it to you? Sinner saved by grace. That's my title. Sinner saved by grace. If you're here tonight and you're saved, listen to me. Hey, the testimonies, hey, because they experienced grace. Oh, we see the people who got involved. But yet we see, uh, hey, look, at can, can I just say, uh, they weren't going to do nothing but cut down trees. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. Come on. Yeah. Don't take a rocket scientist to cut down a tree. Yeah. But they was interested in doing something for God. Didn't make no difference uh, if it was driving the nails, uh, if it was building the structure. But these guys just wanted to go cut down some trees. Yeah, if we could get enough the enthusiasm about us yeah. just to do something for God right. without being noticed. Yeah, right. yeah. Can I tell you, I just seem to be low key. Now I'm loud. You can, don't you say amen. I knew when I told you not to, you would. That's the way Baptist is. <laughs> Don't do this. They're going to do it anyway. I just seem to lay under the radar. Somebody say man. I just seem to lay under the radar. Because it's all about him. It's all about him. I don't want people to see JD. I want to see my God in me. Whatever it is that God lets me do, can I tell you, it's a privilege, it's an honor, it's a blessing in my life that He saved me and He allows me to do anything. Sure. Amen. My God will work in your life that way. Sure will. Oh, listen, they were doing nothing but cutting down the trees. Uh, oh, listen to me, in verse number 3, you see the presence uh, of God's man. Can I tell you, they didn't want to do anything without the presence of God's man. Can I tell you something? We've got to have the leadership of God's man. It is God who deals, hey, with the under-shepherd and the under-shepherd feeds the sheep. I believe that's biblical. No, I know that's biblical. I believe that's the way it ought to be done. Somebody say amen. They cared about it so much they did not even want to go without him. Or the things and the decisions that we make in our life, hey, look here, it needs to line up with the word of God, but yet it needs the approval of God's man. Say amen. Oh, can I say, uh, when you get in verse number four, uh, you see the progress uh, being made. Uh, the, hey, the, here, how the man of God was willing to go. You'd be, so far, you'd be surprised uh, how far God and God's man will go to help you accomplish something for God if you would just get involved. Amen. If you just take a step of faith and get involved. Tonight, I want you to look with me very quickly at verse number 5. Let me read verse 4. So he went with them, the progress, and when they had came to Jordan, they what? Just cut down wood. Wow. Just cutting wood for Jesus. Boy, it takes a whole lot of talent, doesn't it? Just do something for Jesus. Just cut down some wood for Jesus. See, there's something all of us could do. Come on, say amen. 
on it. And look what verse number five said. And it says, but as one was frilling a beam, um, ah, the axe head fell into the water. I get to reading and looking at this, and you know what I see? I see the power was lost. Power was lost. Uh, listen to me. The very thing uh, that these young men uh, who was do, trying to do something for God, uh, the very thing they needed to accomplish their tasks uh, in the ministry, it was gone. It was gone. Oh, can I say, uh, hey, listen, when, when, when one was doing something for God, uh, oh, look, you're just wanting to serve God so bad. Uh, oh, listen, we're going to find out just in a minute. It was borrowed. I wonder how many of us would be willing to borrow something to do something for God. Put our name on the line. Uh, uh, take a step of faith. Uh, just trust God to do something for God. Here was a young man, uh, a student, uh, that the Bible says it was so interested uh, in God and following God's man uh, uh, that he didn't have what he needed. Oh, but he knew somebody that did, uh, and he wanted to do something for God so bad that he went and he borrowed it. Oh, if we, uh, the New Testament movement, if we just inside of this church, this raiment, could get the vision that this young man had. We could fly over hell with a water pistol. It's amazing what we could do if we just had a desire to do. Here was one, uh, hey, he went and barred the axe and the very thing that he was uh, using. Uh, oh, let me tell you, he lost. He lost the very thing that was being used to cut down the tree. Can I tell you, that's what the devil wants to do in your life. And that's what the devil wants to do in my life. He wants to send something by us. He, he wants to disturb us and distract us. Uh, he wants us to get to the place uh, uh, in our life that, listen to me, we're more focused uh, about what's happening to us uh, than our God who created us. Here's one, and, 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 he, and he lost. He lost the very thing uh, uh, that he was working with for the purpose of God. He lost the accent, the part that cut down the tree, the part that done the work. He's lost the very thing that's necessary to do what he was trying to accomplish for God. Can I tell you something, my friend, this evening? The devil would love no more than for you and I to lose our touch, uh, to lose our relationship, uh, to lose our communication. Are you with me? Say amen. Hey, the devil would love no more tonight uh, and for you and I to lose our relationship, uh, that closeness to God, that dependence on God, that trust in God, yeah. our vision of God. The devil tonight would take no more than this raiment that's sitting in this sanctuary tonight and spoil all the testimonies that was given. Right. To lose the very thing that you stand up and say, let me tell you what God's done for me. Let me tell you how God brought me out. Let me tell you how God set me free. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's a devil tonight. He's alive. He's real. And he's wanting you and I to lose. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And if we cannot lose our salvation, hey, the only thing he grabs is what God is allowing us to use to be a witness and a testimony for him. Good. The work that's being done for God. Yeah. I'm getting ready to go to Thailand. I chase this rabbit. <laughs> I've been to Bangkok. With no vision. You've been places you didn't have no vision either. You just admit it. And see, until you admit it, you'll know God can't use you. I'm getting ready to go to Thailand. Fly out February the 11th. Can't wait. 
going by the Philippines, fired up. Have no idea in the world what God's going to do. I know he's going to do something. And I'm not going to miss it. Somebody say amen. I don't have, a, I don't have one penny, Brother Ray. I don't have one God big and penny to do nothing. But my God owns the cattle of a thousand hills. My God supplies my need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Just going to go on and go. Just going to go and go. And here was one. Ah, uh, uh, listen, he was doing something for God. And can I tell you, he lost what he needed to do something. Can I tell you, hey, a lot of us sitting under the sound of my voice tonight, you used to be on fire. You used to be busy. You used to be constant. You used to be faithful. Oh, can I tell you something? Where did you lose it at? Uh-oh. Mercy. Quiet in here now, isn't it? the way it is when God begins to stir when we survey survey our own life and what God was using our life to be that cutting edge as I have heard it preached he lost the very thing that he needed oh can I tell you when he lost when he he lost the axe head pastor you know the only thing he had The handle, Doc. When you lose the axe head, all you got is the axe handle. Can I tell you something tonight? Hey, listen to me, listen to me well. He was, he could swing the axe handle. That's no problem. But can I tell you, he was not going to accomplish what he was going to accomplish when he had the axe head on the axe handle. And see, it's a a lot of people today, they're doing a lot of swinging, but we're not swinging with nothing but the handle. We're swinging with the handle. Can I tell you, when you swing with the handles, you know what you won't see? You won't see no chips flying. You won't see no chips flying with the handle. See, when the axe head, when, when the axe head fell off, uh, hey, the very tool that was being used to uh, hew down the trees, uh, can I tell you, hey, the, the part that was the power of God was being used, it's no proof, it's no evidence that anything is being done. Amen. It's no evidence. Can I tell you something tonight? People all over this world claim to be Christians. They claim to be washed in the blood. They claim to be going to heaven. All they're doing is swinging the handle. No evidence. No chips flying. No chips flying. I believe God, when God moves in and sets up, God gives us a longing and a desire for it, and God gives us everything that we need. Oh, then no slew foot or something happens, comes by, uh, and he distracts us. Uh, we get hurt, uh, and we get harmed, uh, and the next thing you know, all we're doing is swinging the handle, and because the very power that we possess, uh, it's lost, uh, it's gone, uh, and the power we got, we're swinging, but it's no chips for evidence. Brother Josh, in his testimony, he said, I sure am glad God let me go to the jail. <laughs> Woo! Now, I know I don't fire y'all up, but I preached in penitentiary. Somebody say amen. Any good to have a man who wants to go to the jail and thanks God that God allows him to go to the jail so he can have a few chips. And then he can come back and tell his home church uh, what God done. And we sit here. When we ought to be applauding him, we ought to be encouraging him, we ought to be helping him. Somebody say amen. Amen. I like to get involved in everything. I like to have my nose stuck in everything. Anybody in here don't all of you raise your hand one time? Because I know you do. (laughs) Yeah. 
I love to see people get in ministries and begin to do something for God. You know what I want to be, Pastor? You know what I want to be? I want to have one of them chips. Brother Ray, I want to be part of one of them chips that fail. I don't want the whole ministry. I can't do the ministry, but I want to have one of them chips. I want to be one of them chips to be because of J.D. So I can be part of it. Somebody say amen. I don't want to be swinging just to handle I want to be part of it. Are you with me? Say amen. Oh, can I tell you this young man, hey, there was no chips flying, no proof of what he was doing was for God. He had lost his power. He had lost his cutting edge. Can I tell you, when you swing a handle without the axe head, it makes a different sound. Are you with me tonight? Makes a different sound. I thought about bringing an axe handle. But I didn't know who I was going to be able to hit with it. So I could reveal the sound, Brother Ray. But that axe handle, when you swing it and you hit a, you, you hit a piece of wood, it has a different sound, a different vibration. A different move when there's no axe head on it. Oh, can I tell you when I swing the when I swing the axe for God, I want it to have the power and the anointing and the axe head of God upon it. Are you with me? Say amen. Oh, can I say, oh, we're seeing a lot of motivation of people. Oh, but can I tell you, uh, oh, we're not seeing much moving of the power of God because we're only swinging the handles. We've lost our power. We've lost our power. And the reason we lose our power is sometimes we as God's people, oh, we miss the power, but because we forget what God has done in our life. The very things that God has already done, not what God is going to do, but what God has already done ought to fire us up to make us want to swing for God. Can I report to you now, I'm not going to hell. Woo! I'm not going to hell. That's enough to fire me up and put me on the front line right there. Somebody say amen. Glory be to God. See, I can remember what God done for me. Oh, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Down through time, God knew what was going to happen to me. God knew about my life. God had me preserved. We lose our power before because we get over what God has already done in our life. We're looking for God to do things that we should. Oh, we need God to move. We need God to stir. We need God to add. But sometimes we just need to stop and see what God's done. I never once have walked in this church. I'm like some of y'all. I can always come in the back door. You'll get that later. But I never walk in it, Pastor, without thinking about where I'm walking through. See, I wasn't here. I don't know anything about it, but I do know what my pastors told me. I do know about the foundation. I do know what he's told me about the beginning. I do know that's the whole part of the church. Is that correct? I'd say we at Emmanuel Baptist Church have a whole lot to praise God about. Somebody say amen. Amen. I'd say we had a whole lot to remember. Hey, the touch and the power and the anointing and God stirring and God letting us swing for it. And this is only evidence uh, that the chips was flying. Whoop! I thought I felt something, all right. I never walked through that and I don't remember that, Pastor. Not one time since you told me I've ever walked through them back doors and not thought about what you told me. Because, see, when we look around, we ought to be looking at what God done, not what we done. Hey, not what we accomplished. We ain't done anything. It's a gift of God. Why? Because when you was a swinging, you weren't swinging with just the handle. You were swinging with the axe head of God on it. And this is just another chip. This is just another chip. 
Can I report to you? I sure hope it's just not all the chips. Whoop! Say amen. Don't get stagnated. You'll be like the Red Sea. Come on, talk to me a little bit. But the old Dead Sea. Oh, listen to me. Sometimes we, we lose our power because we get over, hey, look in here, what God has done for us. Uh, we get tied up in this life uh, and the miseries of it sometimes. Uh, we'll get down in health. Uh, we'll get down financially. We'll get down spiritually. Hey, we'll get down and the devil will begin to beat on us uh, and torment us and we'll forget we, uh, get, we got the accent of God on our handle. We'll just be swinging with the handle. Oh, we forget over the redemption and God revealing himself to us. Oh, it ought to make a Baptist shout. It ought to make a Baptist shout. That he loved you and he loved me so much that regardless of what we went through uh, and what we've done, uh, it's under the blood, it's under the blood, it's under the blood as far as east is from the west. But hey, in the sea of forgiveness, uh, no more remembered, remembered by God. Aren't you glad tonight? Yeah. Oh, that we can swing for God. Oh, listen, God reveals himself. And then we have the wonderful opportunity to come in and gather ourselves together to worship him in spirit and juice and just rejoice in the things of God. I love church. I just love church. Come to the house of God and worship and praise God. Oh, listen to me, I have to contain myself. If I did the way I was thinking in my head, sometimes you guys would have done run me off. I just love God. I just love God. I want to rejoice in Him. Listen to me. Why do you rejoice? Because I remember what I was. Amen. Some of us need to remember what we were and what God has done in our life. Quit swinging the handle and put the axe head of God back on it. Be revived by God. You with me? Say amen. You know what I'm looking for a meeting? Pastor, I'm looking for a meeting. I'm just looking for a meeting. I'm looking for a meeting where the Holy Ghost of God will come down and he'll set up and have us a tie. And it don't make no difference to me if JD's a preaching or who's a preaching. I'm just looking for the big preacher. I can sit down. I don't have to be on stage. Somebody say Amen. I can be a supporter. Can I tell you, I can swing just as much sitting there as I can up here. Whoa! Revived by God. Remember what God's done for him. And, and, and remember how God restores us day after day after day. Are you with me? Say amen. Isn't it good that when God knows what you're swinging and what God knows what you're trying to do, there's a God in heaven who's merciful. He's grateful. And you know what? He looks over the stuff that we do. is so pity. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me tonight. Listen to me. The power of God. He lost the thing that had the power in it, the axe head. He didn't enjoy the blessings of God. Oh, this one had lost his lost his power this this young man listen to me when he lost his power and I, I'll be done just in a moment when this young man lost his power let me tell you what he did uh, listen to me this young man was limited see when he lost the axe head when the axe head fell off he was limited to what he could do for God can I tell you when we begin to swing just the handles we're limited to what we are it's possibilities of us doing for God we're limited the tool that needed for the task it was lost can I tell you it stopped the work come on y'all with me say amen it stopped the work can you imagine an axe head that stopped the work one little item stopped the work. Oh, but can I tell you, just because, uh, listen to me, listen to me, I'm going somewhere, just because he lost the axe head, he did not lose his job. Good. Good. Mm. At a run, if I had time to run with it. Somebody say amen. He may have lost uh, the axe head that was the, hey, accomplishing what he was doing for God. But let me tell you, it stopped the work, but it did not lose him his position with God. Good, good. 
He did not lose his job. Can I tell you, you can't lose your job. You might lose your touch. You might be swinging a handle. Oh, but can I tell you, God's the same yesterday and today and forever. He is God. Are you with me? Say amen. You cannot lose your position with God. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me tonight. Oh, it had a different sound. It had a different hit. But the axe had been gone. What he was working with. And it all happened, preacher, because he was not watching. Listen to me, I'm going somewhere. He was not watching what God had allowed him to possess to work with. Are you with me? Say amen. It happened to him, Brother Josh, because he was not maintaining. He was not looking at. He was not taking care of what God had allowed him to possess. See, a lot of times we say, well, we're going through this and, and God's put me through this and, and God's put me through here. Can I tell you, sometimes it's us. Right. Amen. Can I tell you, this thing up here will mess you up sometime. Yeah. Amen. You know what I found? I've made so many mistakes. Amen. I make mistakes and I make mistakes and I make mistakes, but I'm glad I don't lose my position with God. I may even lose my relationship with some people, but I'll never lose my position with God. Amen. But you know what? It's all because, of, you know what? The lack of getting close to God and understanding God and maintaining what God has entrusted me with. He lost it because he was not maintaining what God allowed him to possess. What would God do in your life and what God would do in my life if we would just maintain what He's allowed us to already have? Amen. Oh, y'all quiet tonight. The axe head, because He did not maintain it. Look with me at verse number five. But as one uh, was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried, and he said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man, and the man of God said, What? Where fell it? <laughs> you know, this young man could have just walked away. Yeah. Can I get a witness? He could have just quit. He could have thrown the towel in. He could have just walked away. He could have said, I lost what I borrowed. I've done my very best. I can't do no more for God. I can't you down a tree with just a handle. i got to make an effort to get this man his axe back. But he didn't. Are you listening to me? I said he did not. He went to the man of God. He went to the man of God. Oh, if we could understand what the man of God's position is. We just try to fix it ourselves. Without any wisdom, any knowledge from the man of God. The man of God, he says, where? Where? Are you with me? Where did it fail? Where did it fall? The man of God wanted to know he could see that he lost it. He said, but show me. He says, show me where it fell. Look with me very quickly, and I'll try to get done here. He said, where did it fall? And he showed him the place. Uh, look here, and he cut down a stick. Mm. Now, that'll run. I don't have time to go there, but Jesus is our righteous. Uh, somebody said, hey, look here, he cut down a branch. Jesus is our righteousness branch. I wish I had time to preach. I don't. I just don't. Amen. I'm telling you. Uh, I'm telling you this thing right here. Run. Oh, he said, and, and he cut down a stick and he casted it in thither and, 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 and the iron did what? <laughs> Y'all think it's something wrong with me. <laughs> have you ever seen a piece of, have you ever seen a piece of metal swim? I'm telling you, you believe God? Just as sure as I'm standing right here and you were sitting where you at, I believe that metal swam. I believe that axe head swam. I believe just that, hey, it's just having itself a time. You know why? Because that righteous branch touched it. Somebody say amen. Whoop, whoop. 
Oh, listen to me, cut a stick and, and listen to me. And, and look what the Bible says, and it did swim. The, look, I wrote in my note the position of the location of the lost axe head. The position, hey, the, you, this young man uh, showed the man of God where he went, and he understood, uh, hey, that he could not uh, do what he needed to do for God without the axe head. Right. In closing, let me show you this. Look what the man of God told him in verse number 7. He said, therefore, said, said he, take it up to thee. And what did the Bible say? And he put out his hand, and he what? The possession of the lost. To recover it, you would have thought uh, uh, Elijah, when he went over there uh, and took that stick that God told him to take and he, and he laid it in the water and the, and the axe head come to the top and he began to swim, you would have thought the man of God uh, would have ratcheted it down and picked it up and handed it back to him. But it didn't work that way. Man of God did what God told him to do, and the rest was up to the one who lost it. I get out there a little bit sometimes. I get to read in the Word of God, and I, I try to get right in the middle of it. I can just imagine Elijah looking at him and saying, Hey, right there it is. Right there it is. Now, if you want it back, you got to reach for it. Can I tell you something? There's a God in heaven who is our righteous branch. And ever what you want, you got to reach for it. You got to reach for it. You got to reach for it. You can't let anybody discourage you. Can't you, let that, you can't let words uh, hurt you. Let me tell you something. That first, a God in heaven and you want to swing for him and you want to have chips, the evidence that you're working for God. Hey, listen to me. Just like his axe head, uh, regardless what it is, it's there. God can reveal it to you. God can fix it for you. God can replace it. But God is not going to pick it up right. and put it in our hands. Right. Good. It's there. Let me say this in closing very quickly. I've went too long already. Before you ever got saved by the grace of God, what'd you have to do? <laughs> huh? What'd you have to do? It took something on our behalf to get it sealed by the blood. Be willing. To admit to God who we really were. Yeah, Get out on our face and beg God to forgive us and, and, and tell Him that we understand, we believe that He died on a cross for, that He rose again, uh, that He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. Yeah. It was some things we had to do, we had to reach for, Brother Josh. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? In closing, let me ask you a question tonight. What is it you need God to do for you? Now the truth of the matter is, and we are, we are in the sanctuary of God, we are in the temple of God, it's not one individual in here does not need God to do something for them. Did you hear me? I said not one. Everybody that's under the sound of my voice, including this preacher, needs God to do something for them. You know what it'll take? It'll take you reaching for it. It'll take you reaching for it. It'll take you reaching for it. How can you reach for it? You can begin by being on this altar, rebuilding your heart to God. Can I tell you something? You say, preacher, why did you say that? Because many of us, are, hey, we're missing the joy that we used to have, the drive we used to have, the faithfulness that we used to have. And can I tell you, listen to me, just like this man, we know where we lost it, we know when we lost it, and we know why we lost it. But if you want it back, you got to reach for it. you gotta reach, you got to reach for it. man of God said, right there it is. It's a swimming. It's a waiting on you. You can see it. It's available. 
Now, how bad do you want to cut down trees for God? If you really want that ax to be fixed, you really want to do something for God, you got to reach for it. How many in here tonight say, Preacher, I need to reach to God? How many down I, I need to reach to God? It's a, I, I want to swing for God. I want to be a witness for God. I want to be a testimony for God. I want to do something for God. Amen. <clears throat> got to reach for it. How many in here and say, Preacher, I want to reach for it? Sure. I want to reach for it. Can I tell you I'm done? This is your opportunity. If you miss it, it's, your, it's on you. It's not on me. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, I do bow tonight thanking you, Lord, for the wonderful opportunity to be home. God, uh, Lord, be permitted to get in this pulpit. Oh, God, and break the bread of life. And God, I pray tonight, asking you, dear God, Lord, would you move, would you touch your people, God, that they would, Lord, that they, 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 they would reach for it. God, they would understand. Lord, not my words, because I know I stutter. But, oh, God, I pray tonight. I pray tonight, God, they would want something from you so bad that be willing to reach for it tonight. Oh, God, in Jesus, Jesus' name. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.